I'm Bishop Daniel Gutierrez from the Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania. I'd like to welcome you and your family to the celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist on the sacred day of Pentecost. Welcome. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you open the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at the sound the crowds gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native tongue of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy, to another, the discernment of spirits, 
to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. We give gratitude for the many blessings from the one true living and loving God and the beauty of Jesus Christ. My son will be 22 in a few weeks, and when he was young, we had a nightly ritual. I would tuck him in, bless his forehead, and I still attempt to bless him every night by text, and then play a word game. We would call each other responsively by name. I would begin, son, who loves you the most? He would respond, dad, I love you the most. We would go back and forth, attempting to outdo one another in expressing our love for each other. A simple game of words and presence that attempts to describe the indescribable love, an indescribable bond between father and son. I reflected on the beauty and power of words and how in our modern culture they seem forgotten. Literature, poetry, and theater are now relegated to the back pages of the entertainment section. We are conditioned to be immediately entertained. Peace and silence have now become oddities. Look around. Children games have state-of-the-art graphics, so participants will always be mesmerized. Movies must be blockbusters, television, high definition, and the internet must be instantaneous because that's what we demand. Often we see people walking down the street with their heads buried in electronic devices. Yet somewhere in the deep recesses of our souls, inherently, we know something is missing. We know our lives need meaning. And we need words because they have the ability to lead us on this path. Because words have life. They create and they tear apart. Words can either soothe or create chaos. Words can change hearts. Especially now, in these days of physical separation, we realize what we have been missing and what we have forgotten. We long for that face-to-face conversation at a restaurant, that physical connection with humanity when we gather for worship, the simple ability to laugh, eat, and cry together. Perhaps today, we hold or we will begin to value the meaning of words and the connection between siblings and humanity. Today is Pentecost, and I want you to think 
of the words and what happened in that room. But Pentecost in 2020 has profound relevance and meaning in the Diocese of Pennsylvania. We have the potential through not only our words, but our lives to prepare the church, to prepare us to live with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And it depends on us. When we think back to that room, let us remember that the disciples, young and old, rich and poor, male and female, were imbued by the Holy Spirit to go out into the world, not stay satisfied with the way things were, and tell the world how they were forever changed because of Jesus Christ. They were moved by the Spirit. They left that room to talk about God, compassion, forgiveness, courage, hope, and love because they felt it deep within their hearts. These tongues of fire fell on the faithful and the whole church, not just one church over here, but the entire church. And this is where we're called on Pentecost. It is there that the body of Christ takes shape. And the disciples were able to speak in a multitude of languages, and everyone was one. One people, one church, united in God through Jesus Christ. A multitude of voices and words allowed the church to be filled with new life. And if you think about it, perhaps the miracle of Pentecost, if we truly feel that spirit, if we are one with the Lord, it was not that the faithful were able to speak in different languages or even their ability to understand. I can imagine the miracle was that they were able to find the words to speak at all. Because how can they, how can we adequately describe what just happened in their lives and the spirit that filled them? They had just spent the last few years in the presence of Jesus. They had to find the words to describe this man who fed the hungry, who welcomed the outcasts back into society, who played with children, healed the sick, and restored new life. How could they describe the way Jesus made people smile, the way they felt God within them and him, and instilled love into their being? They had to find the words to explain how this beautiful man laughed, cried, prayed, and always pointed to the Father. How can you describe the way he told you to love God and love one another. Or to form a sentence the way he walked to the cross for each one of us. Or even how he demonstrated that we would never be alone, that he rose from the dead, and that he is with us now. Let us find the words to describe what it's like to be in the presence of God. But on Pentecost and each day, those disciples found a way to express their hearts, their words, their minds, and everything about their faith. They knew that the encounter with the Holy One transformed them. They became something new, and they would never be the same. This is the call the church in Pennsylvania. I'd like you to think for a moment. Contrary to all the illustrations we've seen in books, where they're standing there with these tongues on fire and the Holy Spirit moving, we know that they did not just sit there. They ran into the street. They were yelling that Jesus touched them, and now that I am healed. They embraced and told everyone about Jesus' loving embrace. They told about their forgiveness given to them by God. They said, Jesus looked me in the eye and said, I love you. 
People thought they were intoxicated, and they were on God. This is our Pentecost. During this time of pandemic, of sorrow and loss, we also have a time for gratitude for things we have taken for granted, including our faith, including the knowing that Jesus is with us. We have found something new. And like the disciples, we must find a way, through whatever means, to proclaim Jesus Christ through our words and our lives. It should not be difficult, because over this time, we have come together in seeming darkness, and we have brought light into one another's lives in ways we could not imagine just a few months ago. We have checked on one another. We have prayed together more than ever. We have given our gifts to the poor, and we are learning day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, to place God at the center of our being. As we begin our common life together, be it slow and over time, I ask you to imagine, what is the first thing you are going to do when the world opens up once again? Will it be a retail shop or a restaurant that will be our first visit? Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let us give thanks to God. Let us focus on God and how God's divine love gives life. Let us cast away those worldly things. And the first thing we should do is fall on our knees outside of our homes and give thanks to God. When we do so, in this new time, in this new era, with God at the center, we will build this church. We will not be afraid to transform and renew. We will find the words to speak our faith, and we will speak it openly and freely and proclaim Jesus Christ and the love of God. We will no longer be hesitant to love God and one another as Jesus asks. The Spirit of God has caused the church to reimagine its shape and its ministry for over 2,000 years. Yes, the world is the one that encourages violence, injustice, greed, division, sin, evil, and all forms of death and destruction of human beings and even the earth itself. But now is our time. Let us show the beauty and meaning of God. The Spirit is moving through each one of you. It's moving through our churches and it is moving profoundly in your lives. So today on Pentecost, the fire is within. The fire covers you. Go out and proclaim the loving faith found in our Lord and Jesus Christ. So listen, God is calling us by name. He says, I love you the most. Then we respond, no, I love you more. We go back and forth throughout eternity, knowing in our hearts that we are unconditionally loved by the one who loves us the most. It's no longer a game. Let us go out and express that love. Let us build the church. Let us live and love with one another. Let us be that one love with God and one another. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten by the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting people of many tongues in the confession of our faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the Word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. My Lord, my God. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, 
that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. My siblings in Christ, the living body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the living body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he speak to you in those long silences and hold you in the darkest of nights. May he make his heart your heart, so that you will bless everyone that you meet. And may he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you, filled with his hope, his peace, and his never-ending love. And may you see Christ in every person you encounter, and may they encounter Christ through you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with you and those you love this day and forevermore. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.